in this video we will explore the material editor. I personally use the Slate material editor, but I get so many messages from you on how to use the compact, so I decided to make this video on how to use both of them. To open the material editor, click on the M button from your keyboard or click on the material editor button from the main toolbar. There are two interfaces to the material editor, the compact and the slate, and to switch between them, click on the menu Modes in the material editor and select the look you want. I assume that those of you who use the compact started using 3D Studio Max prior to the 2011 release and that's why you feel more familiar with that version. If you are asking me, I definitely prefer the slate and I will shortly show you why. Let's start with the compact. The compact material editor is a smaller and as its name states, a more compact interface than the slate material editor. The interface consists of a menu bar at the top, the sample slots, these spheres, and the toolbars along the bottom and the side of the sample slots. Moreover, it has several rollouts that include the materials settings. Each slot shows a V-Ray material in different colors. To assign a material to an object, simply drag and drop the slot to your object. Another way is to select the material, the slot, select your object and click the Assign Material to Selection command, which is the third icon over here. When a material is assigned to our scene, you see these white triangles in the preview window. Why do we see two different types? When the triangle is a white stroke, this means that this material is assigned somewhere in our scene. When the triangle is solid white, this means that the specific material is assigned to the selected object. If I now select the box, the first slot will get the solid triangle and this will change to a white stroke. While those slots mean that these materials are not yet used in the scene. To create a material, select an empty slot, let's say this one, and adjust its settings. Make sure here it says V-Ray MTL, otherwise click on it to open the Material Map Browser and select the type of materials you wish to create and click OK. Let's go to the basic parameters rollout. From the preset setting over here, you can select some pre-made materials. If I click on the custom button, a drop-down menu appears and you can select any of the pre-made materials that V-Ray offers. Let's select glass for instance. The preview adjust and gets transparent and if I drag and drop to assign it to my box, it gets disappeared since it's clear glass. If you check the preview window, now this one has the triangles and this slot is no longer in use. We can adjust the settings of these uh, pre-made materials. Go to the parameter you want to adjust, let's say the refraction color, and let's make it a light grey so that our box is visible in the viewport. Now let's say that I want to apply a texture to my sphere. I will select the slot, go to the diffuse setting and click on this small square blank button. The Material Map Browser appears and we can select V-Ray Bitmap and press OK. 
If you notice now, we are automatically transferred in the V-Ray Bitmaps parameters. Click on the three dots button and go and choose the texture. I can see the texture in the preview window, but I don't see it in my viewport. To do so, you must click on the Show Shaded Material in Viewport. Let's now say that I want to add some reflections to my finish. To do so, I need to go back to the V-Ray Materials settings and I no longer see them here, so how do I do that? I need to click on this button, go to Parent, and now I can see the V-Ray Materials parameters. Let's randomly add some reflections. Now, let's say that I want to add a bump map. To add a bump map, I must scroll down, open the Maps rollout, and click on the No Map button next to the Bump setting. From the Material Map Browser, choose V-Ray Bitmap, click on the three dots, and select the texture you want to add. As before, click on the Go to Parent to return to the V-Ray Material settings. The Maps Rollout is very helpful to see in which attributes you have assigned maps. Alternatively, check for this M letter next to every setting that you have applied the map. When the M letter is uppercase, this means that your map is assigned and active. If it is a lowercase m, it means that the map is assigned but inactive. How do we turn off a map? Go to the Maps rollout and use the checkbox over here. If I now go back to the basic parameters rollout, here is the lowercase m and my map is also disabled in the viewport and I only see the materials color. If you want to copy a map, go to the Maps rollout and simply drag and drop the map you want to copy to the parameter you want to paste it at. And select Copy or Instance depending on your needs. Otherwise, right-click on the M map you want to copy and then right-click in the blank button of uh, the parameter you want and choose Paste. Here as well, you have the option to choose between Copy and Instance. If you want to copy an entire material, simply drag and drop it in the slots. By default, we see C sample slots, 3x2, and you can scroll down to see more. There are 24 slots in total. You can click on the Options menu and select another cycle. Now we see 5 by 3 slots. And if I click one more time, we will see all 24 slots and the scrolling is disabled. Click one more time and you go back to the 3x2 previews. Every slot can host only one material, and we just said that in total we have 24 slots. So, what happens if in our project we have more than 24 materials? We need to start overriding them, resetting them. Resetting the compact material editor sample slots doesn't remove the material already used in the scene. It simply replaces the selected slot with the default one. More specifically, let me select the glass material and click on the Trust Scan button, the Reset Map Material to Default Settings. The glass material gets override and in its place we see the default middle grey V-Ray material. But if we check the viewport, the glass is still applied to the box. 
Now you can come here and edit this brand new material. If you want to modify the glass material that's on the box, select the slot, click on the pick material from object command and click on the box. The glass material is transferred in the selected slot. I hope it's now clear how the compact material editor works, so now let's see the slate material editor and why I prefer it. Click on the modes menu and select slate material editor. The slate material editor interface consists of the following. The menu bar, the toolbar, the material map browser, the status, the active view, the view navigation, the parameter editor and the navigator. To create a material, drag it from the material map browser to the active view. More specifically, go to the material map browser, go to materials, then V-Ray and select and drag the V-Ray material in the active view, view 1. The material appears as a node contrary to the previous slots that we had before. Double click on the node and the material settings appear in the material parameter editor. Another way to create a V-Ray material is to right click in the active view and select materials, V-Ray, V-Ray MTL. One of the main advantages of the Slate Material Editor is that this window, the active view, can host as many materials as you want to create, so you no longer have to count the slots and when they are full to start resetting them. Moreover, you can create as many views as you'd like by simply right-clicking here and choosing Create New View. This way, you can also organize your materials better. Right-click and rename its view to your preferred one. Or delete the view. To assign a material, click and drag the right circle and drop it to your object. I admit that assigning a material using the compact material editor is easier, while here many get confused and grab the material up here and try to assign it. Trust me, this won't work, so let me repeat it one more time. We need to click on this right circle and drag and drop it to our object. If we want to apply a texture, click on the square empty button, as we did before, and select V-Ray bitmap. So now we see another node, and they are both connected with a wire. To load the bitmap, double click on the V-Ray bitmap node to see its parameters, and then click on the three dots button and select the texture. If you want to copy this map to the bump map, hold the shift key and drag the very bitmap node. Then connect it to the bump map. If you want to create an instance, simply click and drag and you wire and connect it to the map you want. Another way to create a V-Ray bitmap is to simply right-click in the active view and select Maps, V-Ray, V-Ray bitmap. And this is the second main reason that I prefer the Slate Material Editor, because I can see all the maps I have assigned, I can see a preview of all of them, I can see which are instances and which are copies, and I can quickly double click on the node that I want to modify.
If you want to see a bigger preview, simply double click on the preview slot or right click and choose Open Preview Window. Then you can resize it. I can understand if this is the first time you work with a Slate Material Editor, all these wires and nodes might look intimidating, but trust me, once you get used to it, you will never go back to the compact. In the Slate Material Editor, all windows can be floating except of the view. To float a window, drag the window's title bar away from its default location or double-click the bar and drag it in the desired position. To dock a floating window, double-click the window's title bar and it will dock in its default location. Otherwise, drag it in the Slate Material Editor, arrows will appear that show the possible positions to dock and drop on one of the arrows and it will attach to that side. I hope I have made it clear how each material editor works.